Um, it's a great pleasure to be here and welcome to the first um, session of this morning. Let's hope more people will come. Um, at least what I, can, what I can say from the audience is that more or less all of you are familiar with Creative Beast, so I don't have to spend much time introducing it. But I would like to introduce myself. <clears throat> so I work as a developer advocate at CreateDB, um, and my general interest is, of course, big data and uh, community engagement, but my goal is to help developers be successful with the CreateDB, and this is also one of the goals of my talk, actually showing you how you can maximize the performance um, of CreateDB database. I also have background in engineering and data science, and uh, in my previous career, I was academic, and I did a PhD at TU Darmstadt. So this talk is going to be about uh, distributed databases. <clears throat> Are you all familiar with the concept of distributed databases? I think there is no much need to introduce it at this point. But even though there are plenty of benefits, um, and this list is not exhausted, for using one, there is still a challenge of a distributed execution and, distribute, and, and, and data distribution that you have in such a type of databases. So CreateDB is one of such databases, and I would like to <clears throat> take a bit of time to just give a general introduction about CreateDB, especially for you who are maybe not familiar with the, with the, with the concept and how the CreateDB has been built. So it's essentially a database that has been in active development since 2013. It's built on top of Apache Lucene project. And this is one of the databases that promise you some super fast operations, like uh, aggregations that run in parallel and that can run over billions of data. Also, full text search, which is a nice feature that uh, we leverage from, from the Lucene project. But CreateDB database is fully, I mean, it's um, not fully, but we are aiming to that point to be Postgres, fully Postgres compatible. We implement a Postgres Fire protocol, and you can use it with a plain SQL. And what I also feel is one of our main advantages is that there is no limit on <coughs> data formats, like data structures and data models that you can save in, in, um, in CreateDB, that you can store in CreateDB. Um, scalability is always, um, has always been our main goal. So like uh, we support horizontal um, scalability by adding uh, more nodes to your system. And this is super nice because you can indeed store all the data you need. So especially if you have some use cases that involve, involve I don't know, petabytes of data, you don't need, for example, to do any downsampling in order to do some meaningful analysis on your data. You can do it on your entire data set. And we also have built-in high availability and automatic failover. I will talk a bit um, about these concepts later on. So before I start about CreateDB performance, I would like to talk a bit about what are the common issues that we see in distributed databases. So first of all, we need all to reason about how the query get executed. And in distributed settings, this, you know, like there is one challenge extra on top of this. So for example, one of the common issues that we write a query that doesn't end up with optimal execution plan. So in this simple example, what can go wrong here is that with this operation, you actually run it on every single row in your database. So you need to do full scan, full table scan in order to execute this query, which could be quite slow. Another performance issue that we see very often is using this distributed databases with data models that are highly, for example, normalized. Executing joins in distributed databases, and especially in CreateDB, is possible, and it could be done very fast if used correctly, but Joins are a tricky part. You should not actually run it on highly normalized schemas. And of course, besides schemas, you also need to be careful about you know, your data model in general, which should apply to all databases. Then, because um, we need to reason about data distribution, we may end up designing our system that has unbalanced data distribution. And um, for example, we can have wrong 
combination of sharding, partitioning, ending up with too many and too few, or too few shards, and actually hindering the performance properties of distributed database. Finally, there are many other performance issues. So we need to think about node failures and how much does it take actually from a node to recover and data to be fully available. What is the memory usage for each node? And do we have maybe too many requests um, at the same time? So we don't want to end up in situations such as resource contention. So many of these problems is something that we, have, that we are seeing on a daily basis, and I think that they are worth mentioning. So with this in mind, I would start actually with showing you how we can understand the performance um, of the query in CreDB database. This talk is indeed going to be about CreDB, but I believe that the concept and the methodology could be you know, applicable to any other distributed database. So the first thing that you should start is thinking is how is your query gets executed. And one way to do this is first to look into the logical plan. In CreDB, you can use a command called explain to give you a logical plan of your query, which is like abstraction of all transformation steps that you need to execute the query. These are very simple examples just to illustrate how it looks like. For example, we have a simple select statement that end up in a collect operator. This you can, you can look at this as something specific to CreDB, but in general, you know, like this type of logical plan can help you reason about how your query gets execu executed. And also important to mention here, these operators, when you look at them, they get executed in the down top fashion. So those that are, you know, like on the bottom get executed first. So let's take a little bit trickier example. So maybe here <laughs> you would consider, you would think why someone would write, uh, write a query like this. So what this query does, there are two tables. We try to join these two tables and to do a select statement on uh, join tables with a filter. I agree this query looks a little bit silly at this point, but what we noticed at uh, this type of queries got generated a lot by visualization tools. So if you sometimes think, you know, like this query gets slow, there is, there is probably a reason why that is. So first of all, what it does, it joins to table using nested loop join. And then on top of this, it does filtering and then it emits the data. However, this query could be rewritten in a much nicer way so that the CreDB can actually uh, reason properly about two conditions and execute them at once with the hash join algorithm. I will not go into details about how the joins are uh, implemented in CreDB, but there are substantially two algorithms here, nested loop join and hash join. If you're familiar with these algorithms, you know that hash join is way faster, so I would invite you to look at this talk about how joins are implemented in CreDB. And hash join has linear complexity, so when we talk about huge amounts of data, it gets the performance improvement gets quite uh, quite significant. The next topic I would like to go into is the data distribution. So, like in CreDB and many other distributed databases, you need to actually think how your data are going to be distributed over nodes, and uh, we support uh, a concept called sharding which is like splitting uh, your data set and uh, distributing, it, distributing it across the cluster. So this is done automatically, no matter whether you specify how many shards you, you, you want or not. CreDB tries to reason about the best possible strategy for your data set if you don't do anything. And this is done by cluster into um, keyword in, in CreDB. On top of sharding, we have partitioning, which is like something that is under control of the user completely. And uh, partitioning, I, I mean, some people can, can get a little bit more confused with partitioning and sharding, but it's, the idea is the same. So like, it's also splitting a data based on the, on the value of certain column. But what is important to mention here is that for every partition, you will have the number of shards that are, for example, specified during table creation. So let's say we partition by month, so it means we have 12 partitions. And then for each partition, we have three shards. So in total, we have 36 shards. And on top of this, we have replication. 
it's important to ensure high availability. So it's a good practice to have at least one replica for every shard, because replication is done at the sharding level. So imagine, we have 36 partitions, 36 shards, and one replica for each shard, so we have 72 shards. So when creating a table, it's super important to understand how these data get distributed across the cluster. And here we need to find a balance. What is the right number of shards? What is the right number of partitions? Do we need replications more or less? So there, there is all balance depending on your use case and, and the data set that you're using. So I would like to come up, at least in case of CreditDB, I also believe these uh, suggestions are applicable to other databases, what is the good strategy? So to really, you know, like, utilize the parallelism of a distributed database, you should try to aim for as many shards as the number of CPU cores you have in your cluster, because that's the most, where the most performance uh, come from. I mean, the, the, the best performance come from. But always you need to plan in advance how many queries you will have, how many concurrent queries at the same time, and what type of queries are you going, going to run. Uh, also, interesting thing is if you end up, uh, if you have, I don't know, like, uh, too many shards, you maybe start, should start thinking about having master node that uh, should, you know, like balance and um, manage the, the, the execution on, on these shards, like the, um, the load. And then also we need to talk about the size of the shards. Uh, the good kind of practice is to aim for 10 to 50 gigabytes. Um, of the size for each shard, because then you kind of protect yourself uh, not to come in a situation to have over sharding or under sharding. And when you write your query, your goal is to hit as few shards as possible. So in this example, we are sharding by the column B, and we will have five shards as specified during table creation. So in this first query, if we run in CreditDB explain analyze, it will actually run this query, and it will gives, gives us all the steps in the execution of this query. So because CreditDB is based on Lucene, what you see here are the queries um, actually executed on top of the Lucene. So in the first example, we will use in filter only A column, but we are not doing anything with this A column. We are not using it for, uh, for sharding. And to execute this column, we will need to run it on all five shards. However, if we use uh, B column, in this case, which we use for, 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 for sharding, it will actually help this query to, the credit we will be smart enough to figure out on which shard it should run it. So we will hit only one shard. It will run three um, Lucene queries instead of one, but the performance would be much faster because it will need to execute on exactly one shard. When it comes to partitions, as I said, uh, every partition has the same number of shards, so 20 partitions, 10 shards each, you end up with 200 shards. So this is something to be, uh, to be careful about, and again, the aim is to try to hit as few partitions and as few shards as possible. So in this example, we are partitioning by column B, and as you could see, there are like 10 different uh, values for the column B, so we will end up with the 10 partitions and five uh, shards on each partition. If we don't use column B in our filter, um, we will end up with hitting too many partitions and too many shards, which would be way slower than, uh, than if we use it. So. What is like a good practice here is if you're using some column very often in your, in your filter, um, and this has a finite set of values that is not too large, maybe it's a good candidate to, to be a partitioning column. So there are a couple of other performance considerations that um, we, need to, we need to think about. For example, like what we aim to do and what everybody, every CreditB user should aim to do is actually make use of Lucene indexes. So like, as we could see at, at the very beginning of this presentation, this first query um, would run on any single row. 
of the table. But if we just rewrite slightly this query to use a, a like uh, keyword or like operator, actually that can run as a Lucene query and make use of Lucene indexes and be way faster. Another difference when we talk about Lucene and SQL is also about reasoning of null. Uh, Lucene is not able to reason about null values. So if you may end up with the null values in your columns, maybe there is a good, um, maybe it's a good strategy, and I think it's a good strategy, actually to use ignore tree value function, which actually eliminates tree value logic on the tree of operators. And this um, would make Lucene, you know, like always translate null to false, and you can make use of the Lucene indexes in this case. Finally, there is one interesting example I wanted to show you. So can I, um, can I now, uh -huh. okay, awesome. So we have seen a really strange queries when it comes to CreditB from our users. And like people like to use joins a lot. So look at this one. There are like sub-selects, there are like a lot of joins. And on the two tables that this user ran on, this took like 19 seconds. Too much. So there are two optimizations that we proposed. First, common table expressions that could actually make a components out of this query that, that are usable inside the query. And this kind of, uh, yeah, reduced to, I think, six seconds. I will not go into details, but still, this was a lot. And then, super simple, like, uh, optimization on this one. Instead of between, use a simple uh, comparison operators. And this went to 200 milliseconds. So like, sometimes simple performance tricks can make um, a wonder for your database, can make a magic. And I think, um, let me, um, I will just go to the, to my last slide. Um, so we have a very interesting community and a lot of interesting examples on, on, on our forum. So if you're interested, like, check this out. Uh, also, we have a dedicated page for talking about performance in CreditDB. I would also like to invite you to, to, to read it and to give us a feedback. And also, if you have any questions um, today or later, um, Approach me, write me email. Um, there are also two amazing uh, CreditDB engineers with me uh, today. So like we are looking forward to talk to you later on. And thank you for your attention. So I hope I was on time. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much, Maria, for your talk. You're welcome. We get time for one or two questions. Just wait a second, sorry. Uh -huh. Yeah, I'm curious uh, why it can uh, like optimize so much performance. Can you elaborate more? Yes, because the, the, the thing is that the Lucene doesn't handle nulls. And uh, it cannot reason about nulls. So because it operates on a binary system logic, so like when you uh, kind of use columns, when you reason about columns that include nulls, that cannot, you cannot make use of any indexes that exist on these columns on the Lucene level. So I think uh, the goal of, 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 uh, of you as a CreditDB user is to write your query so that you can leverage these indexes in the best possible way. And if you have nulls, you just cannot do this. Mm -hmm. Could you explain, please, why the between clause is different than the greater and smaller clause. In my expectation, I would expect that under the hood, this is the same. You would expect, but it's not. <laughs> it's not the same. So um, I, I believe, I think, um, like my colleagues can also support, I think between can't make use of the Lucene indexes, right? It's a matter of optimization, and in this case, we just did not uh, uh, catch this case and optimize it to the range query. 
participants. And uh, additional to the other question, so what we try to do if you encounter that some queries cannot uh, hit the uh, scene um, queries, that we think of ways where we can uh, do a two-filter logic, like we first uh, filter with Lucene queries and then we add a generic uh, function filter on top, and this is in this case uh, the case, so that's how we can optimize certain queries. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yes, yes. So there is a concept called shard. Shard, uh, yes. So normally, uh, if I understand correctly, in other databases, the database allow user to specify a sharding key, but here you, you the can. shard only only shard number, right? No, no, you can you can uh, okay. specify the sharding key indeed. So here it's done like um, you you can say how many shards you have, and in this case, the CreDB will use uh, internal document ID for as a sharding key. But okay. I think in uh, some example here should be like like in this one. So cluster by uh, oh, keyword see, yeah, op operator can be used to specify the sharding key. And, and by specifying the sharding key here, using it in a, in a filter can can actually help you hit less shards. And cool. cool. So if I didn't specify a sharding key, a row a, a written row will be like randomly distributed to any shard, right? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Let, let, let's finish with one more question, then we can we can talk outside as well. Yeah. yeah. Quick question. And again about sharding, you had this recommendation that uh, shards should be like around 50 gigabytes at most. Um, Could so be a little bit more. A little yes. bit more. Yeah. yeah. So if I wanted to do a projection and just need to read a bunch of rows from the shard, does the system need to load the entire shard into memory, or is it able to get the rows from the shard and? Just, just the rows, but not the, not load the entire shard into memory. Uh, when you query the the table, right? I think you don't need to load the entire shard into memory. So yes, you, you need to access the rows. I mean, a shard contains mostly of, of uh, um, Lucene segments, or shard is a Lucene index, like that. And uh, depending on what you do, uh, what query you do, I mean, the Lucene has stock values, it's a columnar store, or you have the, the normal store, which is a row store, and depending on what you do, um, you need to access uh, loads of data in your memory, is all the docs which were hit by the, uh, um, the uh, index outcome. So this you have to collect. Okay, let's thank Maria more time with the applause. You.